I don't think that any of the countries, I mean, let's be fair here, Serbia were very, very keen to do the right thing. I thought they were very cooperative. They did everything they could to help transit the refugees to the border and, and onto Western Europe. But I don't think they were prepared for the numbers. I don't think any of these countries could have been prepared for the numbers. And I still think that they're, they're struggling to find their feet as the numbers get greater and as the need gets worse. So I, I think it's incumbent on some of the other countries within the European region, in and out of the European Union, to step up to the plate and help these countries by, I would suggest, by taking the refugees in. But if they're not going to be willing to do that, to make sure that there are facilities in place to help these refugees until such times as they can be moved on. As far as your operation was concerned, was there a lot of red tape to get through to actually get to, to Serbia? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, we as a professional charity organisation have to act professionally. Um, therefore, we had to operate within the uh, confines of customs restrictions. Um, we had to appreciate what the UK border controls were looking for in terms of paperwork. But we also had to, in partnership with the Serbians, look to see basic things of, um, you know, what items can enter the country tax-free, what way the paperwork should be presented, um, how the vehicle should be loaded. So there were quite a, a lot of things that we had to go through. But the reality is, if you put the hard work in before the aid shipment goes, it will make it transit so much quicker. And, and essentially, we're looking to get vital essentials to people that need them vitally. So that's why we put in the hard work. So absolutely, yeah, lots of red tape. And obviously, to, to fill the container that size, a great reaction from people here in Scotland, first of all, to the, to the call for help. Yeah, completely. Um, uh, James will testify to this too. Our vans and volunteers have been running about all over Scotland and Northern England for that matter also, gathering stuff from, from you know, individuals donating one or two bags right through to uh, people in Dundee that have collected truckloads of things. Um, the generosity of the people of Scotland is spilling over and that's great. I think one of the, the benefits that the Caring City has is it's got a long-standing reputation for doing this sort of thing and doing it efficiently and making sure that the, the aid gets to those who need it most and people responded very well to that. There's no doubt about it that you know there was a couple of triggers and, and that horrendous photo of that poor young boy was, was a, a trigger for the public and everybody was aware of the crisis that some people were facing and were very, very keen to give support. The people of Scotland have been incredibly generous, I'd like to say, the people of Kitkart more so, because of that's where the charity was based and they really stepped up to it. Tell us about some of the people you met there then, some of the, the refugees. <coughs> um, we met people from all walks of life, um, people who literally had nothing.